the, uh, the top of the sport for quite some time now. But International Fight Week, main event, I mean, is this an extra special week for you? Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, it's always good to fight on uh, International Fight Week, but to be headlining, you know, something special. Incredible fight last time out. Obviously, didn't get the result you wanted. Controversy maybe in the result. But I'm wondering, a fight like that, are there lessons you take out of that, you know, back to the featherweight division? Or is it more just like, hey, I, you know, I went out there and I gave it a shot? There's lessons to be learned, win or lose. You know, win or, a win or a loss. Uh, oh, it's, it's play on for me, honestly. Like, uh, you know, that, that camp was great. I definitely leveled up in uh, some different areas. So, uh, and that's why, that's why you want to challenge yourself because that, that, you know, that's, that's exactly what will happen. Um, you know, a lot of people look at, you know, what could go wrong, but, you know, you've got to look at what could go right and then obviously, you yeah, look at the future because I'm a lot stronger man for it. And as I said straight after that fight, these featherweights better fucking watch out. I love it. And uh, obviously you got to see Yair that night. It looked incredible. Um, Talk to me about the preparation for him. Obviously, you've been fighting nothing but killers for a while, but he seems to present a unique challenge. I mean, did you find preparation uniquely challenging in this? Yeah, 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 definitely. That's, uh, it's, it's been exciting. You know, I said, uh, I just mentioned like, how good it was to do the, the challenge in uh, Islam. Like, you know, it's, it's exciting. You want, you want them challenges. And this is a total different challenge uh, when it comes to the ground and the striking. And it, it's... I'm disciplined. I'm always going to train hard. Uh, yeah, I've been saying that all week. That like uh, I don't need to be motivated or anything to to train hard and do what I need to do. I'm going to do that anyway. But it just adds another, you know, more excitement. You know, we're more more eager to get to the gym, figure th things out, the game planning, get more in the zone. You know, really uh, em embrace some of, some of the the game planning and the, and all the things that uh, we need to do in there. So it was it was good. Yeah, no one again. I got enough about respect for Yair. Again, he is a dangerous uh, opponent, and uh, yeah, and, that, and that's what I want. But I just want to show everyone, you know, why I'm the the top of these uh, the featherweight division, and uh, yeah, really show my skill set. I think work ethics is something that's just ingrained in you, but was it difficult at all to adjust? I mean, you're this close to, to champ champ status, right? And you're kind of embracing all that. Was it hard to get the mindset back to go, hey, you know, it's still impressive to dominate a division the way you have? Oh, I mean, look, obviously it stung straight after it, but play on, man. You know, it just adds to the story. I'm going to get that rematch. Don't worry. I'm going to do my, my business this weekend and uh, I'll get that rematch. And then it's just going to add to the story. You know what I mean? It was a close one. Do we think we did enough? Yeah. Was it a robbery? No. It was a very, very close fight. Um, I know that, but um, I showed you guys and I showed everyone that, you know, well, I definitely wasn't going to get ragged on like everyone thought. Um, and, uh, you know, I ended up on top and uh, really put it on him. But the next one, I'll take that win and it's just going to add to the story. Last thing for me, and you kind of touched on it there. I mean, a win here obviously would be huge. I know you're, you're impressed with the Elite Taporia. I mean, do you want to continue to finish this belt? Or I wasn't that impressed. You were. <laughs> But, uh, you know, but I mean, I'm glad that everyone's impressed because, uh, uh, again, that'll just hype up a, a future, future fight. Just, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, but I've got a, a more of a threat in front of me this weekend. So I'm, I'm going to pay attention to that. If Ilya wants that smoke, it's going to be good because I know he will uh, talk that, that trash, which is fun. And uh, punching people in the face that talk trash is so much better. Alex, just going off that, why exactly weren't you impressed with video? What did you see that we perhaps didn't see in that fight? Well, mate, I can't give too much away, right? I think, uh, you know, I think a lot of people could probably touch on some of the things. But, uh, yeah, put it this way. People don't look like that when I'm in front of them. You mentioned there about the people talking trash. I'm assuming you weren't that impressed with his prediction that he would beat you in the first round, should you mean? Yeah, dreaming. Okay. With the Islam fight, is that one of those fights where... 25 minutes in there with him gives you such a good game plan and blueprint for how to beat him the second time. He's one of those guys that once you compete against him, the first time, you know exactly the adjustments you need to make for the second fight. Man, I knew what adjustments I needed to make as soon as I stepped out of that octagon. Uh, I, I straight away, I was like, man, I wanted that rematch right now. Like, I know what to do. Uh, but, yeah, I, everyone knows I'm uh, good, good with the rematches. And, uh, yes, yeah, so they're just... Right now, again, I've got to focus on your year, Rodriguez. But, uh, yeah, th that'll come. Yeah. With the Rodriguez thing, you know, you're going from lightweight back down to featherweight. I saw in some of your pre-fight stuff that you were saying you felt a lot sharper and more explosive. What's the biggest sort of thing you weren't expecting from the weight changes that you've had over the last year? So, uh, going heavier? Well, so you've gone like, from going heavier and then going back lighter. Oh, yeah, but I mean, obviously notice uh, that, that extra weight. You know, that's why during camp, like when I was doing the bulking and I was a little bit heavy, yeah, going, doing the, everyone knows the workload that I've got. 
uh, it was at the end of the week, my body was definitely feeling it, you know, carrying that weight and wasn't obviously moving as much and just to definitely uh, warn you that a little bit more. Uh, so halfway through the camp, I'm like, I want to be a little bit lighter. I want to be, because I, I reckon I'm going to be just as strong anyway and I'm going to be fast. So we found that perfect weight um, and that was a little bit lighter. So I wasn't too much heavier than I would be this weekend, to be quite honest. Um, not too much anyway. But uh, yeah, it feels good to be at featherweight again and uh, being as sharp as ever. So definitely that, that bulk uh, made me stronger though. I, that camp and again, rising to that challenge, to that occasion, definitely put um, some of my skills uh, on a whole other level. In some of the footage you put on your YouTube channel ahead of this fight, I've seen some spinning kicks from you that we haven't necessarily seen a lot. Is part of you kind of like, oh, I'd love to knock out Yair, yeah, the spinning kick guy with my own spinning kick? Mate, I do beat a lot of people at their own game, so you never know. As I've been saying, ta Taekwondo Volk is coming for fucking everyone. <laughs> oh, Excuse my French. <laughs> um, a lot of talk going into this card about like Robert Whitaker maybe making a quick turnaround for Sydney. Is there any interest on your behalf to do that? I know you said you want to be active, or is that maybe too much with like championship fights? Oh, I mean, it wouldn't be uh, too much. There's a couple of hurdles there. Like obviously, you have making sure you got the right opponent, making sure there's no injuries and uh, little things like that. But uh, my uh, yeah, so Emma's uh, my wife is uh, due like uh, two days before the Sydney card. So there's another little hurdle there. But um, <laughs> But you know, you know, you know, we were talking to doctors, maybe induce a week earlier, or you know what I mean? Like we'll, we'll see what we could do. But all the stops. Um, if we do get Islam and Charles again as the next lightweight title fight, do you expect that to go similar, or do you think maybe we get a different result this time? Um, I expect that to go similar. You know, uh, and that's no disrespect. Well, I mean, obviously, Charles is very dangerous. You know, he he can always catch him, but uh, I think. Uh, Islam style, like, you know, he's, he's patient. He doesn't take unnecessary risks. Um, so you need to, you know, put it to him uh, in, in different ways than just hoping to, to land something, uh, just one shot, I think. So, but, and I'm not saying that's all how, um, how Charles fights. I just think, look, Islam's good. He's well-rounded, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of people are trying to say, oh, I've, you know, we found a chink in the arm or he's like, you know, I've, uh, you know, figured a puzzle and all that. It's, that that's me. That's because I was in front of him. Um, he, he is as good as you were saying, but I just told you that how good I am and uh, was going to show you that. But again, I, every time I talk about it, I'm just like, fuck, if only I got my hand raised, you know, it's so much a better conversation to have. But, um, but yeah, I, I see, see it being the same. So uh, I'm, the, I'm the guy to take that belt. If Charles did win, would any of you be disappointed? Like, is going back to 155, is it about beating Islam or the belt? What's more important to you? Beating Islam. Mm -hmm. Alex, over here. Um, you mentioned Charles Oliveira. What did you make of his performance against Benil Dariush? Uh, he was counted out by a lot of people, and he went out there and made a statement. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I was surprised by how many people were counting him out. Uh, again, look at who Charles has fought, the who's who, and he's so dangerous. You know what I mean? So um, I wasn't surprised. I know uh, Dariush is very uh, durable and uh, well-rounded, but I mean, uh, I just thought uh, that matchup wasn't too bad for for for, for Charles. And, uh, you know, he showed that, you know, showed the, uh, again, he's a, he's a dangerous dude. So you've got to be uh, careful and you've got to approach uh, him the right way. We were here about a year ago uh, when you fought Max Holloway and you talked about sort of being disrespected a bit by people calling, you know, there's Max calling him the uncrowned champ and all that. And since then, you've had the fight with Islam and I know it didn't go your way, but a lot of people felt like you put on a very good effort. How have things changed from the fan perspective? Because I feel like you gained even more fans from that performance against Islam. Yeah, yeah, that, you know, it's uh, obviously the stocks uh, didn't lower after that one anyway. So that's why so many people, you know, were obviously saying to me like, oh, you know, you should be proud. Like, oh, you know, like, because uh, I was surprised. You'd be surprised how many people, you know, didn't think I would be, uh, you know, thought that I'd probably get manhandled. Like, you know what I mean? And didn't think I, I stood a chance. And there's probably people close to me that thought that. You know, there was, there was vibes I was getting, you know, the whole way through the whole thing. is like, you know, almost why are you doing these vibes? So, uh, you know, so a lot of people didn't expect the fight to look like that, even people close to me. And, um, but yeah, the, that's why a lot of people, you know, oh man, like you should be so proud. And they were, you know, very, very happy with that. And obviously the fans as well. So everyone, uh, I, got to sh I still got to show myself, but uh, I, that's why I, it stung me more than... Obviously, it's always going to sting the guy that loses more, but it stung me because uh, I know I could get that job. I know I, I will. You know, I will get it in the future. But uh, So that's why you know, hearing people congratulating me for losing 
was pretty tough at the, f- the first week, but I understand it. Like, I'll be... It did help with the help with the loss. You know, a lot of people are like, how have you taken it? Look, I'm going to play on. You know what I mean? I say play on uh, probably because of my mindset and uh, how I go about things. I just adapt. You know, I've just always been uh, good at doing that. But, you know, that, that sort of process with everyone being like, wow, you know what I mean? Uh, probably helped a bit too. And last one for me, uh, Max Holloway's fighting uh, the Korean zombie. If you go out there and win on Saturday, do you think we'll see him move up? Because if you're still champion, I don't think we'll see a fourth fight between the two of you. Yeah, man, that's, uh, you know... You know, everyone's, uh, yeah, we've all, you know, I, I'd like to say I've read that book, you've all read that book, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky situation for him. You know, uh, he's probably, you know, hoping that a uh, year takes me out and then he can get, get a shot. But, um, yeah, I don't plan on that happening. Alex, Alex over just... here. Um, right here. Yeah. Can I ask what this uh, Band-Aid is on your face? You know, you don't know Nelly? Nelly, you know what I mean? <laughs> Is that a UFC champion? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it is actually, you know what I mean? They get, nah, look, it was a, a little scratch and, uh, you know, we don't want to get it uh, infected uh, so close to the, to the fight. And so, yeah. Um, can I ask, because Yair's been in the UFC, like he was in the UFC before you. I think it looks cool too. You know what I mean? It doesn't look bad. They, they custom, you know, they custom made uh, the Mexican uh, belt. Uh, belt or whatever it is, and they custom made some Band-Aids for me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask, uh, how long has Yair been on your radar? Because he was in the UFC, and he had a lot of highlights even before you came over. So it felt like he took – there were a lot of breaks in his career. But, like, mm-hmm. how long when, when did, How long has he been on your radar as a future opponent? Oh, um, they're all on my radar, right? Like, I keep an eye on everybody. But, yeah, he's definitely been right up there. You know, there's, he's had a couple of uh, number one contender fights as well, being in a position where, uh, you know, knowing that he could be next or coming, coming up soon. So he's, I, I've definitely – because I know how dangerous he is, so I knew he would uh, eventually be there. But uh, you just had to wait for the right time that uh, you know, it was his turn. And being interim champ, it's his turn. So the, the timing uh, fits very well, and here we are, International Fight Week. Do you pay attention at all to the, the top of the Bantamweight Division too? Because there's fighters like Aljamain Sterling that says, like, well, look, if I beat Sean O'Malley, I'm going to go up. And mm-hmm. that's another possible yep. super fight for you. So at, do you pay attention to down there as much? Too? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, uh... I think he, if he, he goes out there and takes out Sean, like he's definitely paid, paid his dues. Uh, how many times defences would that be? Three or four. Four, yeah. Like a, yeah. So th- there you go. I think, I think so. Uh, he's a big dude. But uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, obviously he's got a tough, tough fight ahead of him. But uh, yeah, that's another possible uh, fight. So uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's plenty of options. And again, I want to be active. So cool. Keep him rolling. Are the Nuggets going to be in attendance? Uh, yeah, I think Jamal Murray's definitely going to be there. I don't know who else. So... See, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Nuggets guy. See, I, it, was, it was good. The timing was perfect, actually. So I ended up uh, meeting him in August last year, and he got into the seed, uh, season. I was backing him, and, and they won. Perfect. And now he's going to be here International Fight Week to support me. So looking forward to it. And the last one for me, Saturday is going to be Robbie Lawler's last fight uh, in the UFC. So I'm curious if you have any favorite memories or favorite fights from his career. Oh, man, there's so many. Uh, so many. I mean, uh, th- that, that wall they had the face off, you know what I mean? And his lip was just completely open. Uh, you know, that's got to be a pretty pretty iconic uh, moment. So even us, me and uh, myself and uh, Ortega had like a face off, you know what I mean? I was even like sort of thinking I get there, them sort of vibes, you know what I mean? So that just shows you, you know, that's a big moment for me. But, you know, I, I think of that when I, when I look at that Ortega. So it shows you how much of a big... Uh, Big moment uh, that was, especially the the blood they had and you know the war they had. It was a, uh, it's crazy. Alex, people just, always remember those fights. Alex, just yep. over here. Uh, you mentioned about the transition back down to 145. Was that hard? And do you see yourself being able to do that successfully, going back and forth through the divisions? Yeah, no, that no, wasn't too hard. I actually, I didn't. As I said, I didn't end up that much heavier. So we did the body scans uh, once we, you know, we knew the fight was happening and. We were sitting at pretty much the same uh, that that same weight or like muscle and everything as we did like for July last year. So it's uh, I don't think we actually put on too much. So uh, and I don't want to for next time at lightweight. I know I don't need to because um, the, st- the strength's not the is- issue. Uh, yeah, and I know my, my my strength and my technique will be enough for for all the the lightweights anyway. So then uh, that'll make that transition much easier. Do you think that would impact? your performances at all at lightweight making that transition nah because i'm going to sit around pretty much the same weight Mm -hmm. and um you worked with carl van Mm roo in the run-up to this fight how beneficial was that oh yeah it's uh i was lucky enough to have a a couple of people in camp that 
Yaya is very good uh, at all ranges. Long range, obviously you've got the Taekwondo, and uh, then you've got the short range sort of uh, unpredictable things that come from everywhere. So I was lucky enough to have Blood, Blood Diamond, who's a, if you ever watched his uh, kickboxing highlight, the highlights, go have a look at that, and uh, you'll see a lot in Yair, Yair Rodriguez uh, there. So that was great having him there, and obviously he's bigger. Uh, and then Carl Van Roon, that 11-time uh, Taekwondo world champion, you know, uh, he's a specialist at what he does, and he does MMA. He understands the game. Uh, he did a lot of study and really committed to being a training partner for me, and he's, again, a lot bigger than me. So having uh, guys like that to not just go through and uh, work techniques with me, I was sparring these guys. So, uh, you know, having a longer, rangier, 11-time world champion uh, Taekwondo guy spinning some crazy shit at you, um, that'll keep you on your toes. So, uh, you know, I'll be on my toes uh, uh, ready for whatever comes uh, come uh, Saturday night. And when you look at Yair's style, what do you think you need to be aware of the most? And how do you see the fight itself playing out? Uh, be aware of everything, because everything's coming from everywhere. But uh, again, it's, we all know that I make people fight my fight. There are things that, uh, you know, everyone looks a certain way till I'm in front of them. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's uh, no surprise that... Uh, you know, my opponent's volume goes down uh, and a lot of their assets, strong assets, are usually a compromise. Yeah, I'm usually able to nullify a lot of uh, people's uh, strengths. So uh, look forward to doing that. Again, Taekwondo Volk, he's coming. Thank you. Um, you mentioned before that you considered Conor McGregor a dream match of yours as he's the only UFC featherweight champion you ever faced. Uh, anything can happen, obviously, but... Where am I looking? On the roster? Sorry. Oh. Back here. oh, yeah. Oh, at the back there. Oh, sorry, mate. Yeah, there you go. Uh, did you get that first part? Or? Uh, yep, yep. Okay, so uh, anything ha can happen, obviously, but is there any other fighter on the current roster within the featherweights or lightweights that you would love to face or even a past fighter that you would have loved to share the cage with? Oh, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's plenty, but uh, there's a lot of a lot of fun fights at at lightweight, you know what I mean? So... You never know whether the BMF uh, is gone as well. Maybe BMF, you know, we'll go, we'll go what? Get free belts, you know what I mean? Get a BMF. Put, uh, get an actual champ that, uh, I don't know, I think that, that, that'd be cool. You know, get, uh, get some credibility on that uh, BMF belt. Having a champ that, that goes in there and takes it as well. So I think that'll be, that, that's another option. There you go. I mean, they're great fights as well. So uh, there's a reason why they're getting it. You know, they're exciting, uh, big names. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of exciting fights. But, I mean, these are, these are fights that can definitely happen in the near future. Awesome. And uh, you are talking about your teammates, but you got to watch one of them, Craig Jones, compete on the Fight Pass Invitational. How special was that to see him compete and win, even walk out to your song as well? Yeah, that was, uh, that was cool. I didn't expect that. I didn't know he was going to walk out to the song. But, um, yeah, good. You know, he didn't... Uh, he faced a, a, a you know a legend of the sport who's no who's no joke, and to go out there and uh, take the win was was awesome. Uh, beautiful way to start the week, uh, you know, our little trip here uh, to Vegas, and I'll end it uh, with a, another big win, and then we can uh, properly celebrate afterwards. At excess, everyone's invited. I see that prime bottle next to you. Oh yeah. Yeah, just uh, yeah. Obviously, it's a, a big deal, a massive opportunity. And, uh, yeah, just uh, got talking to, to Logan, I met him a couple of times, and, yeah, that's how it started. Uh, and we're in our prime, right? So, perfect fit. Uh, back up here. Yep. Uh, quick question for you. You know, as big of a betting favorite as it really comes in terms of a champion fighting a number one contender, let alone an, an interim champion, you know, how does it feel to get this much respect from the Osmonds? Yeah, it's a... Uh, I think it's well-deserved, you know what I mean? That's no disrespect to Yayi. I think that's just uh, all because of, of what I've done. And, you know, and uh, again, I always say there's a, you know, people can be a safe bet, you know, when you've got the guy that's got the heart, uh, resilience, durability, and you know, a fight IQ and, you know, all the right stuff, you know what I mean? It, it makes it very hard for people to take him out. So it's good to see that uh, finally people are, you know, really taking note to that. But the beautiful thing about it is uh, no matter how much of a favourite I am, I, the mindset that I have, I, I look at him as a big friend. As I've said, like I've said uh, pretty much the whole camp, he's probably the most dangerous guy that's been put in front of me. So I can completely zone out everyone's uh, thoughts on, on how they think this fight's going to go because I see these, uh, these problems, I see these uh, 
challenges and that helps me really prepare and uh, that's why you'll never see me underdone every time I step in that octagon. Uh, everything. I enjoy everything. I mean, uh, that, uh, yeah, I was asked, you know, what do I ha love about it and what I hate about it? I uh, love and hate both of them. Right now, while I'm cutting weight and not being able to eat and really, really enjoy Vegas, I hate it. But then straight after the fight, I'm going to love it. Alex, you uh, mentioned earlier years custom belt that he had up there. Mm -hmm. You know, the interim belt itself rubs a lot of fans the wrong way, but he's sitting up there with an interim belt and the custom belt both in front of you. Um, what do you think about that? Like, do you think that's maybe ain't disrespectful at all in a way? Since oh, for, for a second. I seen a bit of red on that. I was like, wait a second, is this the Mexican one? Um, no, I, sorry, do I feel disrespected? Yeah, that he's sitting up there with two titles and neither of them are the undisputed one. Oh, I don't care. You know what I mean? I know I'm the champ. Everyone in here knows I'm the champ. The world knows I'm the champ. So that does, doesn't phase me one bit. Uh, as I said, and that's no disrespect to Yair Rodriguez, but, mate, make the most of it. Enjoy it while it lasts, because uh, I plan on winning this weekend. And just last thing, uh, what did you and Mel Gibson talk about? <laughs> um, oh, man, just, uh, you know, he's uh, obviously a fan of the sport. You know, you see him at a lot of events. Uh, he's, been, he's been at a couple of my events. And uh, just, yeah, just said that uh, he loves uh, seeing uh, someone that's, uh, you know, just, I think his words were excellent at their craft. Uh, something like that, just, yeah, just sort of uh, stuff like that. And uh, obviously I've said I was a big fan, and it's cool to have Braveheart saying shit like that to you. Alex, um, I just wanted your thoughts on Ilya Taporia, uh, him as a fighter, and just um, his his fight with Josh Emmett. Doug, do you feel like he's next? Um, yeah, I think that we'll use it all hyping him up. A lot of people are asking me about him. Uh, so yeah, keep uh, my you know honestly keep my contenders uh, top contenders away from him because I might not be facing him. You know what I mean? Like, again, use a, use a saying he's a guy. and Well, yeah, cool. Well, that's good. Let's, let's keep him away from everyone uh, so he can, uh, if he's going to get a whooping, uh, let's make it uh, from me. Thank you.